This video is on maintaining a Mr. Christmas bobsled uh, ride. As many of you may know, the belt may start to slip, and there's a couple reasons for that. So I'm going to show you how to uh, adjust the belt and to uh, maintain it. So let's just push this aside. I've it, I already have it partially apart, so to save time. So I'm just going to show you. Here's all the pieces. Take, make sure you take all the bobsleds off, of course. And some of the material that we're going to need. We're going to need a paper towel, some isopropyl 91 or 95 percent or better alcohol, uh, a light brush. This is a, an old cosmetic brush my wife gave me. It's great for dusting off things and getting into tight spots. A Phillips head screwdriver with a good tip. Don't get one that's all messed up. You're just going to strip your screws. You're going to need a cotton swab, maybe a couple, a toothpick or two, a sharpie, um, this is a uh, lubricating grease for like model trains. It's like a lithium uh, lubricant. It's great for the gears in these. Um, you can get that from any model train store or online. And this is a light oil lubricant or you know premium oil with a nice applicator. And you're going to need that only for the uh, the bearings in the wheels. Just a tiny drop at the bearings, and you work that in. And I'm going to show you how to clean those later. And that's about it for the materials, you know, plus or minus other things as needed. Now, let's get back. So the first thing you want to do is, before you open this, now everything is kind of part here, so don't worry about flipping off and all that. Um, so what you want to do is, you want to be able to tear this apart a couple, three times. Let me show you about this. It might, might be hard to see. But all these screws here, you want to say no, no. Let me flip this around. So before you even take it apart, there are a lot of screws you don't need to take apart, really ever. So it's this screw here, no, no and you write in no, right, with your Sharpie. No, 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 no. And then under this screw, on this back plate, there's a screw up here. Put a yes, and then there's a little captive uh, screw for that. Put a piece of tape over that so that doesn't pop out. So I wrote tape. And over here is the other screw, yes. And tape. So you notice they say one of seven. I didn't want to write on the back up here, but that's one of seven, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of seven. It's that screw right there. All right, so you put tape over those two uh, retainers. You don't touch the other screws, you just touch these two that are actually on the back plate. And you wrote that on the bottom to remind you. So you take off those seven screws and you pull off your knob, which is kind of hard sometimes to get off. Sometimes a screwdriver helps, so you pull that knob off and put that aside. And once you get the seven screws off, this comes off, okay? Oops. Lost a little screw in here. I tape my screws in place. They tend to work the way out over time. I'll tape it up later. So now you have this back plate that has to come off. All right. And again, I wrote which screws? A of E, B of E, C of E. You take those three off. And inside here, it's kind of hard to see, there are two more. I didn't even mark. But there's two more screws. So that's D of E and E of E. That's kind of a menu of, oh, I could have wrote of a five, but there's five screws. One, two, three, and two in the back. And you need your screwdriver. you got to reach in there. and You might have to use a stubby screwdriver to get that one. After you remove those three, then there are five more screws. Okay. One down there in the far corner. It's hard to see. One, two, three, four, and five. Once you get all those screws removed, this will easily come out. It's going to be hooked in some plastic pieces. You have to unhook it. You have to pull it out. It comes right out. It's that easy. Now, bear with me one minute. Put that there. So, now it's hard to see in here, but this is your belt in there. 
okay? And you could slip the belt off. Let me see if I can slip that off for us right here. I'm gonna reach in, pull the belt off. Where's my fingers? I'm trying to drop it in there. Now, these belts, they stretch over time. They could break, but what usually happens is they get glazed. Glazing is when dirt and oils and contaminants in the air and friction works its way into the rubber and it creates a very slick surface, almost a shiny surface. That's called glazing. So um, when you're looking at these belts, you got to be careful with them. So I do not recommend soaking them in alcohol, as many people do. I remember I recommend using some um, uh, ion, uh, deionized water or uh, distilled water or tap water, if that's all you have, and wipe it down. Now, if the inside of the belt is where it slips the most, is still slipping, you can always take like a, a little bit of sandpaper, very fine, like 200 grit sandpaper, and lightly sand the glazing off of the rubber to get it fresh again. That's, a, that's one of the biggest things right there. Don't sand it too much. You just want to get the glazing off of it. Now, if the belt has stretched and you can't find the belt because, you know, Mr. Christmas doesn't always sell everything anymore, you can go to your local Ace Hardware store and see if you can find a rubber O-ring. It may be black. It may be a little thicker than this, but it'll still work with the motor. And you get a rubber, rubber O-ring that fits. Um, in other cases, what I've done, even if I couldn't get an O-ring to fit, I cut the O-ring and cut a tiny little piece, maybe less than a millimeter at a time, and glue it back together, and then I can make the belt a little tighter. These belts can't be too loose, they can't be too tight. If they're too tight, the motor binds. If they're too loose, the motor doesn't grab. So you have, they have to be just right. And I kind of wish they had worked like a, a gearing system, but they make these cheap. If it was me, it would have been a stepper motor <laughs> and with more torque, and there would be no slippage whatsoever, but that's the way they make them. Now, the trick is, if you ever do cut a belt, always get a couple of them extra. And I wouldn't recommend cutting your, 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 your own, you know, manu OEM, original manufacturer, equipment manufacturer belt. Um, get a new one. And then if you cut it, cut it on an angle, a diagonal. That way you've got more gluing surface. When you cut short, you've got a shorter gluing surface. When you, when you cut it on an angle, it gives you a better glue. And you want just a tiny bit of super glue. Nothing else. And you got to use the liquid, not the gel. Tiny bit. Hold it on there. Get it on there. And if you have to, sand it with a little piece of sandpaper to get it smooth again in case you got a little extra glue on the outside. So, so that's one way of getting a belt to fit. So I'm going to keep that off now. because We're going to go on. The other thing is, when the, when you, I, have, I don't have my, my power pack is out on the display. I didn't want to pull it out, so I don't need to pull this. But you power it up. And then the gear should start turning when you turn it on. And you should grab the gear lightly, and it should spin through your fingers. You shouldn't be able to hold that gear. If you, if you can hold that gear and the motor's still spinning or the motor stops, you know, there's, if you can hold that, you know, hold that gear and the motor's still spinning, the shaft is slipping on the gear. You need a really good contact. There are many ways of doing it. What I do is if I pull off the gear, I hit with a file, the metal shaft, and then I put a drop of crazy glue as I put it back on. And that usually grabs the, the wheel pretty good. So this wheel, I can turn it right now. I, it's not turning, which means that it's not going to slip. I've already cleaned all the grease off. If you want to clean all the grease off, just wipe it off with Q-tips, uh, paper towels, a little bit of alcohol if you want. And on the back of the, the plate here, this gear comes out. Comes in a few pieces. Okay, we pull the gear out. Never, ever, ever grease the belt or lubricate the belt in any way. That has to be dry. If you lubricate the belt, you're just causing more problems. You're just going to introduce more dirt into it and do grime, and it's just going to be worse. So you have to trust me. Do not ever lubricate the belt. And this is in three pieces. Again, you want to make sure this is tight on the shaft, right? To make sure it's not slipping. And it goes together like this. You have to put the spacer in and then this is for the belt you can see it, it's got like a little ridge on each side that's the way it goes together so you clean this all out okay and you clean the base out here and then you put a little bit of lubricant the uh, white lubricant I'll show you the white lubricant again 
So all these gears get white lubricant. It looks like this. Bear with me. Okay, it's kind of yellowish. Okay, so you, that's the kind of lubricant you put in these holes and on the shafts. Okay, so we're going to lubricate the shaft. And we're going to put this all around. I'm not putting it all on there. I'm just putting a little bit right now. And locate and, and lubricate the other shaft. Okay. And lubricate the top of this where it touches the, the plate here. Or you can put a little lube down in there if you want. But don't put lube on where the belt goes. Okay. So you get all the lube off your, your hands. You put this back in this side down. Now it's kind of hard to see. Okay. And then you work the belt around the pulley. Might be hard to get in there. You just work it in. Work it around the gear. You could pull these off too. These little uh, guides can come off. There's four of them. You could pull those off and lubricate them underneath. Again, not on the belt, but lubricate them underneath or where they uh, screw in. You can put a little lube in there. And those, those are usually not a problem. So you kind of work it in. Okay. Now you can see it's... got to get it around this tension right here okay and there you go and it should it should run smooth again I don't know if you could see that but you see you want we want this gear assembled like that the main gear out here and the the gear with the um, the side pieces that that guide the belt on the inside okay I don't know if you can see that it's kind of hard to see that but there you go and bear with because I can't see the camera and I don't have a cameraman going here, so I'm sorry about all this, but just give you an idea. So that should feel fairly smooth, but maybe a little stiffness due to the belt. Again, don't lubricate the belt, just the gearing. And that's pretty much it. Now the hard part is you have to get this shaft into this hole, and you want to lubricate that hole too. So you're going to put a little lube right down there. You're going to put a little lube on this gear. A little lube on the outside. Again, do not lube the bottom part of the gear, just the top part of the gear. And the shaft, and a little bit of lube in there. Less is more, actually, in this case. And you're going to have your belt back on that you've cleaned, right? You're going to have your belt back in there. You can see, can't really see it there, but you'll see how it goes on a small shaft on the motor and a larger uh, pulley that the belt goes around. And there's actually a screw back there that you think you have to remove, but you don't. There's a little tiny screw back here. It looks like these two. That holds this steady. It's kind of hard to get to without tearing it apart. But um, I was able to reach in there with a screw, a tiny little stubby screwdriver and loosen it a little bit. You don't need to tighten it. And that gives you a little extra play here because you're going to have to see how I'm stretching and moving this. You're going to have to do that to get that shaft, that shaft to fit into that, that bearing right there. So... We're going to try that now. We're going to put this down. We're going to get it in the slot. You can see the slot. Now, before you do that, make sure no wire. See how the wire got under here? I don't know if you can see that. A red wire got underneath this, and that can get pinched, and you can break that. So you got to make sure your wires are pulled out of the way. Nothing's pinching. Nothing's in these slots here. Okay? And bear with me, because this is not going to be easy. This is the tough part. You put your, your, your panel into the slots, and then you it's kind of hard to see here. I can't really show you in camera. You have to move that little, you have to move this back and forth as you slip this gear into there, okay? I wish I could show you that. You're just going to have to be careful. Don't bend it too much, and you have to work it, and eventually you'll get that little shaft in the pulley, and then this will be good. And then you can add all your screws, the three in the front, the two in the back, the one I told you behind here that you loosened, you can leave it loose. It won't come loose. So you put this, you got that in, you put your five other screws in and you're almost home free. Then you put your cover on over that. The uh, Five screws here and the two screws there and you're done. 
then you can pull off the tape off the bottom. I just leave it on there. Because if you don't pull off this tape, as soon as you pull that screw, this little plastic thing pops out. I have no idea why they did that. But that's the way they did it. The, the, what the screw holds into it's like floating. It like kind of, you know, so I guess it can vibrate or something. I just leave tape over it so I don't lose them. And of course, this is a good time to fix your pads if they're missing. You know, cut pieces of rubber and get them to fit in there if you want. Mine's on a display that's soft, so it doesn't even matter. I, I, we've got like a cotton down, so it just sits on that. Now, I'm sorry I didn't show you all of the... Uh, step by step but actually taking it apart but i gave you tell you remove these screws take this off this is your hard piece it comes off easy it's hard to get in no lubrication on the belt at all now there's another trick if it turns out that your belt is so loose for some reason this is this is a pretty good shape it's kind of say how hard to make it tight but you should have like a little bit of an arc here see this arc here that means if this thing is straight across and tight that's too tight and the thing that's arcing way up like that it's too loose so you get a feel of it. That arc should go right around and like that. That's a good idea of the tension of the belt. Now, if you have a belt that's too loose, you can, what I've done in the past, and I've probably done it on this belt, is I take out with a razor blade, I, I, I slice out one, one tooth on the belt, and then I crazy glue it. And I slice it right on the, the, the tooth part so it's wide. I have more crazy glue to glue. And then I glue that back as, as like halfway on each tooth, you know, halfway on the tooth. So the two halves of the tooth go together to form a new tooth. And I've tightened up the belt by one, um, by one, one tooth. Again, you, you, you got to be careful when you do that because if you make it too tight, you're pretty much done. And I'm sure you can't even get these belts anymore for these Mr. Christmases. So... That's only as a last resort, and maybe you should wait until I make a video on it, because I need to make a video on belts, and, and, and belts like this, all on their own, because I can go for an hour and a half on all the trips techniques. But it might be a good idea at this point to clean off the belt, make sure there's nothing on the belt, no, no grease, no lubricants. Again, you lubricate this thing as I showed you. These four guide wheels can be lubricated lightly. All right. And then you put it all back together, the hard part there. And I think we're pretty much done for now. So there's other things I want to tell you about. Oh, okay, so let me tell you about maintenance. You know, this thing pops off. I used to hot glue it down. I just leave it on there capped and I just pop it off because I'm taking this thing apart maybe once every other year. That's how often you got to clean these belts because they just don't, you know, my wife runs this a lot, especially during the winter. And you can see this is beat up. You're going to find out some of the snow stuff that they put on there is going to flake off over the years. Not much you can do it. But another thing that people do is they lubricate these, uh, these rails. Never, ever lubricate them. Never. You're just collecting dust to them, and you're just going to make it worse. So what you need is you, you get in there with a cotton swab and a little bit of alcohol and a wipe. And you wipe these clean all the way down. Don't push too hard. You don't want to dis, you know, deform these too much. But you got to really work it, work it as well. And just the slots, you know, just the guides. See, there's a little bit there, just dirty. And be careful. You work, you clean these all out, all the way down. And you keep those nice and clean. Also, is if you get one that you just bought, you want to make sure these these, uh, these 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 slots are equally spaced. Another thing is, it's kind of hard to show here, but you got to if you if you get one. Where all these uh, seams are between the, the guides, you see there's a little seam there. I Sometimes the, the cars can catch on that seam. So I took a little file and I lightly filed the uh, seams so they're smooth. So when you can see if I put a car on there now, no, no grabbing whatsoever. There's a couple, three, there's another seam down here that you got to get. At. There's one over here, there's one in the back. That's the main thing. So. No lubrication ever on your tracks. Make sure that that center um, slot is clean and equally spaced. You got these uh, little holders here and this. And clean the tracks. No, no lubricant on the tracks. And you'll be good. And you're going to clean that about once a year maybe. Now the cars, they're pretty easy to clean. With a little bit of alcohol and a rag, you wipe off that tea. That holds it in the thing. You wipe off the wheels really hard, round and around and around and on the sides, and you wipe down the cars a little bit too. Now the only lubrication you want on these cars, let me see if I can get this here. The only lubrication you want on these cars is with your 
high quality model train thin lubricant. Look at this. It's I swear, it's so hard to do this without a camera, man. Premium lubricant. You can get this at train stations. A train, a model train, uh, train station. Model train stores. And you're going to want the tiniest drop right at the top of each bearing. Just the top. And then work your way down through it. One, one drop a year on each wheel. That's it. No lubrication on the other parts of the wheel. No lubrication on the tracks. And now let me uh, put. Let me actually lubricate that because I didn't lubricate it. Wow. There it goes. So I got a tiny drop on those. Now we'll see how that works. Put it on the track. Might be a little slower. It's got to work. Yeah, it's a little slower now. You see? See how lubrication can really make a difference? You know, these didn't need lubrication. So if it gets like that, there's nothing you can do. You could probably soak in a little alcohol or whatnot. But you see, I, I, I put a tiny, tiny, tiny drop of lubricant on those bearings, and that affected their operation. They don't need much lubrication. Okay, it'll eventually work its way clean. It's getting better. But you see, it didn't even come together. So, again, only lubricate if you really think it needs it, only if it's slowing down. So now I gotta, I gotta clean that off. But again, you can't use this lube on the wheels, the thicker stuff. You need this really... And there, there, might, there might be a shelf life on this because it was, it was getting kind of hard to get out of the tube. I'm thinking maybe there was a shelf life on these things and maybe, it's, maybe, the, maybe that's why it's affecting the, the wheel. I'll have to talk to my train guy and ask him if there's a shelf life on these lubricants. All right, so that's one other trick is keeping that clean. What else? Uh, another thing is down here. I put this little paper uh, fence here and glued it in with hot glue. When the cars come down, sometimes they can actually start coming down and they'll flip around like sideways like this and get stuck. So this little fence I put in helps the cars from uh, when they're coming down the track. Okay, if they're coming down the track and they try to fall, they, they stay right in. Another, another, another area to watch out for is this little, I call it the scoop down here at the bottom. Let's see if we can see it on the screen. The scoop down here at the bottom. That has got to be super clean and I there were burrs on that, and I've shaped this over the time with little tiny files to really smooth this out so I get the best transition onto the belt. If you're not good with, you know, files and mechanics like that, I wouldn't recommend doing it, but I tweaked this, you know, just like, you know, I'm going to take another thousandth inch off here, and I made it really smooth down in that area. That's the critical part because a lot of times cars are just not going to catch the belt. That's just the way these things work, or they're not going to catch the belt until the next car comes down the line and bumps up to it. And also, you might find that your cars don't come out when they get to the top. Mine does that. It's not worth it. Just leave it at the top, let the next car come out and push it down. You know? And it's going to come in. Wow, I really messed up that car. Look at that. Little, yeah, I think that, I'm going to have to clean that up. That oil was no good. Let's get into one that didn't oil. Look at that. That's how they should work. Right? And you see how it came all the way to the end? Sometimes they'll come here, or, they, or they'll hit the belt and they'll bounce back off and they won't catch the belt. And then it'll take another car to come down. To push it onto the belt to catch. So you got to watch out for that too. But that's normal operation. So if a car doesn't pop off at the top, the next one, leave it. What I also found out is it's very hard to run all five cars. They just start piling up on each other and they get caught on the belts and whatnot. And this is a good time to clean this section of the of the guide. Make sure this is totally clean. And on the inside rail here too. You want this all totally clean, even where the belt runs through. That's a critical area. So uh, I hope that helps. Again, look out for other videos as I tell you belt belt repairs. And again, uh, if you 
you know, when it comes to lubrication, less is more, and don't lubricate unless it needs it. I think that's the biggest lesson. So, um, if you have any questions, my uh, email is at the end of the video. And thank you very much.